The superannuation system in Australia consists of two phases. Accumulation phase, where super contributions are being saved and invested over our working life. And a pension phase. This is the retirement phase when we start drawing an income to support our lifestyle expenditure. For years, our government has been working on our superannuation accumulation system with changes often introduced to supposedly improve it. Well, some changes have been successful. Others, well, let's be honest, they are just a way to either collect more taxes or limit our benefits. And the main reason for all those changes is the fact that year after year, there are more and more people retiring than entering the workforce. But in all, we can say that our superannuation system is relatively established and we can now say it is well matured. This cannot be said, however, about the pension phase and that's exactly why the Retirement Income Review has been set up to fully understand people's behaviour with money in retirement and what policies could be recommended to ensure high quality of retirement can be achieved by most retirees. Upon the review, it was found that most retirees believe that they should only draw their earnings or interest from their superannuation savings with their full and untouched capital to be passed on to the next generation. However, our superannuation system is not designed as a tax-efficient way to pass those savings to your beneficiaries. The system has been built so in retirement, those superannuation savings will support your living needs. Therefore, it is expected that you will spend majority of your superannuation in pension phase and not give those savings to your children. So what are your options in retirement? What can you really do with your super savings once you retire? Today, I will try to answer those questions and go over options available to you in retirement. My name is Catherine Isbrand from About Retirement. I'm Certified Financial Planner and you are watching About Retirement TV, the place to learn all you need to know about financial issues when preparing for your retirement or how to improve your retirement financially if you're already there. I'm a principal of financial planning practice about retirement and as the name indicates, I specialize in retirement planning, government benefits, tax issues when preparing for retirement, estate planning or investment in retirement, which logically should be different to investing while in accumulation phase. But that is another issue for another video. Our today's question is, what can I do with my superannuation savings once I retire? This is the question I have noticed gets listed very often in comments of some of my videos, as well as I get asked during my personal meetings with new clients. So obviously this is not as clear as it should be. So first let's start with a preliminary question. When can I access my super? The general rules to access super are as follows. Number one, turning age of 65, even if you continue working. Number two, reaching preservation age and retiring. And number three, reaching preservation age and commencing a transition to retirement if you continue working. I have already recorded a number of videos on those exact subjects, so please watch. When can I access my super, please? Superannuation preservation age and rules. And K 
Can I access Super and continue working? TTI explained. I will link those videos at the end of this one so you can continue watching and learning. Assuming you have retired, what choices do you have now with your superannuation savings? Number one, commence retirement income stream. There are so many videos on my channel on retirement income stream topic, I'm unable to list them all here. So feel free to search around or read information on my website about retirement.com.au. As you can see through most of my videos, I am a strong believer that one income stream is not the best way to set up your retirement. That obviously will still depend on the overall value of your investable assets and whether age pension is even a consideration in your situation. If it is, the correct design of your income and split between different income stream options can provide quite a substantial difference in level of income and security of it every single year for the remainder of your retirement. Number two, withdraw a lump sum. Once you meet conditions of release, your super is your money and you can withdraw any part of it in a form of a lump sum. It can be partial or full withdrawal. Generally, I do not recommend withdrawal from super just to have money in a bank account. After all, once your super savings have been moved to pension phase, they're not subject to any tax. No income tax, no capital gains tax. If instead you invest funds directly on your name, all the profit and interest are subject to your personal income tax. But sometimes there are reasons to make a partial withdrawal, such as, for example, paying off the mortgage, home upgrades, Retirement preparation, such as, for example, a new car, that you have a reliable vehicle for the rest of your retirement or a good holiday. But please plan properly so you don't waste your money in short term only to have no security savings in later retirement years. That is exactly what I am showing as a situation comparison in my last week's video, should I spend my money to have full age pension? Number three, keep savings in super. Sometimes people think that on retirement, they must move their superannuation savings to an income stream. No, you don't. You can keep all or part of your savings in superannuation. I'm not sure what would be the reason, apart from having in superannuation more than the transfer cap, which currently is $1.9 million. This is the maximum you can currently move to a retirement pension. Therefore, if your superannuation balance is greater than $1.9 million, the rest would have to remain in the superannuation account and unfortunately be subject to 15% tax unlike the rest in a pension account. If this is your situation, I am certain you realize the value of good professional advice for your retirement. Number four, combine the above options in any proportion that suit you. Again, I repeat, there is no rule that says you have to start an income stream just because you retired. But remember that a good, solid and reliable plan takes into consideration all possible aspects of what could happen in the future, together with unforeseen circumstances. This is why you need to organize your savings with the view of the following. Sufficient income, funds, longevity, financial flexibility, tax effectiveness access to government benefits where possible, investment risk, and estate planning. Often this is easier said than done, and that's why a professional advice with a retirement specialist is absolutely essential. If this is your situation, just organize a meeting for us through my website about retirement.com.au. On each page, there is a button book a meeting where you will be taken to my personal calendar. 
You can book a day and time that suits you. And when we meet, we can go over your situation and your retirement plans. I hope you enjoy this video. If so, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel. And visit my website about retirement.com.au to learn more about best strategies, rules and regulations to be really well prepared for your retirement. And while you are there, please sign up to my newsletter to be always notified first about all the changes that can impact your retirement. And now continue watching some of those previously mentioned videos. When can I access my super please? And last week's video, should I spend my money and have full age pension? Both videos presenting essential information when preparing for retirement. Enjoy and I will speak with you in my next video. Bye for now.